Hello there everybody and welcome to what I painted this month, June 2017. I realise this video is a tiny bit late, but I'm sure that'll be forgiven because of the supreme quality of miniatures on display. And this isn't going to be the longest episode ever, because it's mainly Arkonauts. I already went over in intimate detail last month on exactly how I paint them, but there are two units. So we're looking here first of all at unit number one, which is armed with sky pikes. As you can see in these units, I've mixed and matched the axes and the swords to add a little bit of variety in there. You don't get any posture variety, but you do get quite a nice selection of poses for the arm positions. I think this blue colour scheme is coming along nicely. I think they look quite tasty. So let's have a look at some close-ups, shall we? These close-ups are far more zoomed in than the previous ones I did, so you can actually see any tiny little mistakes on these ones. Not that there are a huge amount, and obviously no miniature would ever be scrutinised at this close a level because humans don't have eyes that have this level of zoom. So for example, you can see tiny little specks of the wrong colour in the wrong place that are completely invisible to the naked eye. So I think I should zoom in slightly less far next time. Anyway, I think they still look very tasty. I like the little green dots here and there, which are done with the waystone green technical gem paint. When you do zoom in this far with the camera though, you do have the option to pick where the focus is and then the others drop out of focus which makes it look fairly cinematic I think. The sky pikes are the only weapons that I've actually applied any green to just because they had what appeared to be the perfect spot for it. You can see there just below the blade. And there from the rear you can see the succulent butt cheeks. And then we have unit number two with the ethermatic volley guns. So three of the weapon in each unit. And you can see in this one that I've also mixed up the swords and axes equally. I don't know whether that'll happen as time goes on and the models get mixed up during the course of play. They may end up jumping around between units because they don't have any particular markings on them to differentiate them from the other squads. You'll notice that all my commanders in the squads have the volley pistol. That's because I see no reason in the rules to take the other pistol and also it just looks cooler. Some close-ups on these guys as well. Nothing too fancy about the weapons. The little bits of gold on the leader help make him stand out nicely, I think. It did drain my soul painting 20 of these at once, because it's a very time-consuming way to paint them. There's a lot of detail that has to be picked out. And there's that unit from the rear as well. And here's a full image of my entire Caradron Overlord's painted force so far, as you can see the three units of Arcanauts and one Arcanaut Admiral. Next thing I'm working on are ten Thunderers and one Ether Chemist, which are on my painting table at the moment, but I took a few weeks off from painting because painting 20 Arcanauts in one go did drain me of all my painting enthusiasm for a little while. However, that doesn't mean I wasn't doing anything. I was doing plenty of miniature assembly in that time because that doesn't eat into my painting enthusiasm at all. So that's allowed to recharge while I'm assembling miniatures. So I put together some more Terminators for my Deathwing, put together a couple more Caradron Overlord models, and also my Grot tank army for 40k which you will see more of at some point soon. I'm sure it won't take me too long to get around to painting them, because they're not going to be overly difficult, I think. I'm sure my Caradron Overlord army will be painted slowly but steadily over the next few months. I'll aim to get something done on it each month, and then eventually it will be finished. But I've got some that's still in their boxes unopened, just because it was cheaper to buy them on release from certain websites than if I'd waited until I wanted to actually do anything with them. Also because most online stores have a threshold for free postage that only comes into effect when you spend a certain amount. And there was one other tiny little thing that I did this month as well, which was to do a square base for this colossal beastie, which is of course Talos from Jason and the Argonauts, which I wanted to use as a giant in Kings of War for my Stormcast Eternal Ogre army. So I had to put it on a square base. So nothing too complicated there, just a lot of dry brushing to make that, and then he's actually blue tacked onto that square base. Because his base doesn't have a gap under it for a magnet, and I didn't feel like drilling into it. So there we go, that's everything. I'm not going to get a huge amount painted in July, I predict, but I should get something finished. And I've definitely been doing plenty of assembly in the meantime. So let me know what you think of the continuing aesthetic of the Caradron Overlords in blue and white and what you would like to see me work on after my Thunderers are complete, because I've got all the airships, I've got some Sky Riggers, among other things, also plenty of 40k projects, and some more Kings of War stuff as well coming soon. So until next time, ta-ta, folks.